Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm happy to be kicking off the new year with a new What I Eat in a Day video, and this one is all Whole30 recipes. While I'm not a fan of rigid diets, I am a fan of Whole30, and that's because it's really not a diet. You're not restricting calories, and you're not prioritizing weight loss. It's essentially a 30-day food challenge where you eliminate certain foods that may cause digestive or other health issues, and you learn how your individual body responds to those foods. I'll talk more about this throughout the video, but first, I think we need to start with a little drone footage again, don't you think? And let me tell you, it was a foggy and chilly morning along the coast. I've been up, I've been down, I've been taking chances that I never took before, all the way up on the highest mountain. I did my first ever Whole30 a couple of years ago, and it was really educational on how my body responded to certain ingredients. For instance, dairy definitely causes acne for me. Now, today I do eat some dairy, but I'm also aware of what may happen if I go overboard. And that's the beauty of Whole30. Just learning how foods may trigger your energy, mental clarity, hormones, cravings, and for me, certain autoimmune symptoms. I eat pretty clean most of the time, but I'm also human and have a tendency to let too much sugar creep back into my diet. So doing a Whole30 is a great way to get back on track and remember how much better I feel when I'm not eating loads of sugar. For breakfast this morning, I'm whipping up an easy breakfast scramble. I show these all the time on Instagram stories and just toss in whatever's in my fridge. If this is your first Whole30, I can't stress enough how important meal prep is to making your life easier. This morning, I just need a couple tablespoons of diced red onion, but I'm dicing up the whole red onion so I can easily use it in other recipes throughout the week. I have several meal prep videos on my channel, and while they're not all Whole30, you can still get heaps of ideas from them. After saving a little bit of the red onion for my egg scramble, I'll also slice up some cherry tomatoes and whisk two to three eggs, depending on how hungry I am. I'll drizzle a little olive oil into a saute pan on medium heat and add some minced garlic. Then toss in my veggies and a couple handfuls of baby spinach. Now, I get asked all the time how I cook scrambles in a stainless steel pan because yes, the eggs do stick, but I don't own any nonstick pans. Old school nonstick was quite toxic with PFOAs and PFTEs, which essentially is Teflon, and while today's nonstick is better, I've had my all clad set for over 20 years and it's enormously durable. So I'll show you how I clean it in a second. After a minute or two, your spinach will wilt down and then you can add your eggs. Let them cook for a couple of minutes, then add them to your plate. Normally I'd add some sliced avocado to the side, but since I'm having avocado with lunch today, I'll just add a sprinkle of microgreens because you can never have too many greens. And that's my easy and healthy breakfast recipe. But before I enjoy this, I'll place my pan in the sink, squirt a little dish soap, and add hot water to let it soak. All right, to wash the stainless steel pan, I just use hot water and a scrubber sponge. Now, most websites will say to not use a scrubber sponge as it can dull the surface, but I'm not concerned with maintaining the mirror finish. I'd rather my cookware be well used and clean, and this is how most restaurants do it as well. And see, so easy. For a mid-morning snack, I'm enjoying some celery with almond butter, and it's made even easier as I've already meal prepped my celery stalks and made my almond butter. 
If you're new to my channel, I do have a separate video on how to make almond butter in your Vitamix, and I'll link that here. My tip when it comes to snacks on Whole30 is to portion out what you'll eat, because if I were to just dip the celery straight into the jar of almond butter, I can guarantee I'd probably eat far too much. To give this snack a little boost, I'm adding a sprinkle of chia seeds on top, though you could also add raisins or dried cranberries as well. If this is your first Whole30 and you feel cravings strike throughout the day, the first thing I'd recommend is to make sure you're hydrated. I drink a ton of plain water, but then we'll also have an herbal tea here and there. Some of my favorites are chamomile with lavender, peppermint, and lemon ginger. Tea time is also usually a work break for me, though today I spent it answering a bunch of your comments on my website and YouTube channel and relaxing on my sofa rather than at my desk. Of course, I'd rather be on my patio, but it was just too darn cold outside for that today. For lunch, I'm keeping things really easy and whipping up some tuna stuffed avocados. I make a lot of meals from scratch, but I think it's important to remember that you can definitely use Whole30 compliant canned goods to make your life easier, like canned tuna. Two brands I frequently grab for tuna include Safe Catch and Wild Planet. Both of these are high quality tunas, and I also wanna point out that the albacore tuna I'm eating today isn't in water or oil. It's just straight up tuna, so you don't need to drain the jar. The liquid in the jar is from the tuna steak, and as you can see here, it's a solid, fresh piece of tuna, and not mushy, cheap tuna, which does make it a bit more difficult to get out of the can sometimes. Once both jars are emptied into my bowl, I'll use a fork to break up the tuna and stir it together with the liquid to add the moisture back to the tuna. Next, I'll add a quarter cup of mayonnaise and I'm using my homemade mayonnaise. If you've never made mayo at home, watch my separate video for it because it's incredibly easy and once you make it yourself, you'll never buy it from the store again. Then I'll add a half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and this brand is Whole30 compliant a couple tablespoons of red onion, and one stalk of celery. This comes together really fast because my red onion is already diced for the week and my celery is already washed. So I just have to slice and dice one stalk of celery, which is two halves that I have in my jar. I receive a lot of questions on the storage containers and jars that I use. So as a reminder, I do have a separate video on that and you can always find all of the products I use on the shop page on my website. Lastly, I'll chop up one to two tablespoons of fresh herbs and today I'm using parsley and chives. But dill also pairs really well with the tuna, so feel free to use an assortment. This is a great tuna salad recipe to eat on its own, but today I'm enjoying it stuffed in an avocado. The healthy fats keep me full and the creaminess of the avocado paired with the savory tuna is absolutely delicious. So all I have to do is slice an avocado in half and hope that it's a perfectly green avocado, which this one is, remove the pit and pile on some of the tuna salad. I'll also sprinkle a little black pepper on top. Because I'm one person, I've also got leftover tuna salad for a couple of days now, so I'll store that in the fridge and then go enjoy my lunch. Most of you know that I work from home and while I love it, I've found that my posture and flexibility has been getting quite bad because I'm hunched over my laptop all day long. 
So I've been making more of a concerted effort to take stretching breaks in the afternoon, and already I'm feeling so much better. There are some wonderful channels on YouTube for yoga and stretching, but I found this one from Yoga with Adrienne that has stretches for text neck, which is exactly what I need. I've realized that much of this what I eat in a day video is also meal prep for the week, but that's just because that's how I truly eat. I tend to cook in bulk so I can enjoy leftovers all week long and to be honest, to do less dishes. You guys know I love hummus and today for an afternoon snack, I'm making a new hummus recipe and this one is low carb, paleo and Whole30 compliant and that's because it's cauliflower hummus. So I'll preheat my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and slice my head of cauliflower in half, then quarters and remove the florets from the stalk. Once all of the florets are removed, I'll add them to a sheet pan, drizzle a little olive oil or avocado oil on top and give them a toss to make sure everything is coated. Then I'll roast these for about 20 minutes or until they're just starting to get a little color. While the cauliflower is cooking, I'll add all of the other ingredients to my Vitamix, and that includes two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of water, and a quarter cup of tahini. And since I didn't have any of my homemade tahini already made, I just grabbed this one from the store. I'll also add the juice of one lemon, one clove of garlic, a quarter teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon ground cumin, and a pinch of ground coriander. When the cauliflower is done, I'll scoop that into my Vitamix as well, then blend everything together until it's nice and creamy. This recipe is similar to my traditional hummus recipe and really just swaps cauliflower for chickpeas. But I will say that even with only one clove of garlic, the garlic flavor is quite a bit stronger in this version, and that's because cauliflower is so neutral in flavor. So if you're sensitive to garlic, you could also saute the garlic or use garlic powder for a more neutral flavor. Now, I'm not going to eat this entire batch of hummus, but I thought I'd show you how I garnish it if I'm serving it for a crowd. I'll scoop it into a bowl, drizzle a little olive oil on top, and sprinkle some sunflower seeds. Then I'll chop up a tablespoon or so of fresh parsley and add that on top, along with some cracked black pepper. And this cauliflower hummus is always a hit at parties. Because I have my celery pre-sliced, that makes for the perfect device to scoop up the hummus, but I'll frequently use carrots or sliced cucumber as well. And then of course, I'll put the leftovers into one of my glass lock storage containers to enjoy this hummus throughout the week. For dinner, I'm gonna make a Whole30 creamy chicken broccoli casserole, and this is so darn good. It's got a cheesy-like flavor without any cheese, but we'll get to that in a second. First, we need to make some shredded chicken, so I'll add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to a pan and about one and a half pounds of chicken breasts. I'll sprinkle these with salt and pepper and cook on one side for five minutes, then flip them over Add a cup of chicken broth and add the lid and let them continue cooking for about seven to 10 minutes or until they're cooked through. I think shredded chicken made this way has so much more flavor than straight poached chicken. While the chicken is cooking, I'll make my vegan Alfredo sauce. This is a reader favorite recipe on my website and it's perfect for this casserole. I've already soaked one cup of cashews overnight, so I'll rinse those and add them to my Vitamix along with three quarters cup of water, two garlic cloves, a half a tablespoon of lemon juice, a half a cup of diced yellow onion, and two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, which is the secret ingredient that gives it that cheesy flavor. I'll also add one teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon dried rosemary, and a quarter teaspoon black pepper, and then blend it all together until it's nice and creamy. Now, I know that cheese-like replacements, like a vegan nacho dip, are not something Whole30 supports, but I did ask Melissa Hartwig Urban about this recipe, and she said it was fine in this context. The chicken and broccoli are the star of this dish, and the vegan Alfredo sauce just keeps it all together. 
Now for the fun part, which is how I shred four chicken breasts in about 15 seconds. And when I shared this on Instagram stories a few weeks ago, you guys were amazed. So all you have to do is add the chicken to your stand mixer and use the paddle attachment. Lock the tilt head on your mixer so it doesn't bounce up and turn it on low. In 15 seconds, you'll have perfectly shredded chicken. I need to add some veggies to this casserole, so I'll slice up 10 cremini mushrooms and dice about a half a cup of yellow onion, and I already had the onion diced in the fridge. I'll add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to a pan and saute the mushrooms and onions for about three minutes. While the mushrooms are cooking down, I'll remove the florets off two heads of broccoli, though I'm using three today as one of mine was a bit smaller. Then I'll add these to my pan and saute for another three minutes or until the broccoli is crisp, tender, and bright green. After I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, all I have left to do is assemble my casserole. So I'll place the shredded chicken on the bottom of a casserole dish and layer the broccoli and mushrooms on top. The vegan Alfredo sauce is quite thick, so I'll thin that down with a cup of chicken broth and then pour it on top of everything and this will thicken back up while it's cooking. I like to make sure everything is well coated, so I just smush it down a bit with the spatula and then cook this for 20 to 25 minutes. When the casserole comes out of the oven, the sauce should be bubbling and slightly thickened. I've made this recipe several times over the last two months and I am still not tired of it. It's creamy, filling, flavorful, and it makes for the best leftovers as I think it has even more flavor the next day. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I eat in a day and maybe got a few new Whole30 recipe ideas. I have more Whole30 recipes on my website along with a Whole30 shopping list and a post with Whole30 compliant snacks, so make sure to check all of that out as well. If you'd like to see more what I eat in a day videos in the future, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments below. And I will see you again in next week's video.